Well, good morning. <laughs> it's good, to, good to see you. What did you do to them? It was the joke, wasn't it? By the way, we are glad you're here this morning. And if you can go to a restaurant, you can come to church. Because at a restaurant, you take your mask off. And here you don't. So, you know, if, you can go, if you're going to a restaurant and then saying you can't go to church, I'm just going to call you a hypocrite. Okay? There you go. All right. Because I'm the pastor. I can say whatever I want, right? It's good to see you this morning. Yeah, you can say it. It doesn't mean it's true. But there it is. You know what a hypocrite is, by the way? Hypocrite's an actor, a person that fakes it. So if you're honest about your foibles and follies... You're not really a hypocrite. You're just a normal Christian. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Today we're going to talk about the importance of goals. And one of my goals is to not offend everyone, the first sermon of the new year. Here's our series verse. Here it is. Philippians 3.14. Paul, uh, arguably one of the most amazing Christians ever. And amazing how he bridged the Old and New Testament with his uh, training from the... Uh, uh, Bible from the Old Testament, uh, trained under Gamaliel, who um, is still known as the uh, last oral tradition uh, rabbi, and, uh, and there is Paul in the middle of all this, and yet Jesus shows up to him, he gives his life to Christ, and here's one of the things he says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. He said, I press on towards the goal. You know, sometimes when we hear the word goal, we think about, you know, TED Talks or some kind of secular goal that people have. They're going to use the word leverage. You know, whenever you go to one of those meetings, leverage. And uh, they like to say, we leverage our abilities and all this kind of junk. But the truth is, the word goals is a Christian concept. It involves faith. Jesus, over and over, talked about goals that he had. Even going to the cross, he told his disciples. And this year, some of you may have already established some physical goals. That's usually where we start. We look in the mirror or we step on the scale or, or we realize we can't see our feet, you know, or whatever. And we say, you know, this year I'm going to not eat cookies or this year I'm going to exercise. And, um, and then the year comes and then we say Monday. Monday's a good time to start that thing, right? And, and so we have those physical goals. Sometimes uh, you might have some goals for your family. Maybe for your family, it's, you know, we're going to take a vacation this year. We're going to have family time this year. Um, for some of you, you may started with some new emotional goals. For those of you who are grieving, the idea of um, a grief share might be a good start to work on some emotional goals. For some of you, you need to read the book Boundaries. Boundaries. B-O. No, I'm just kidding. So, um, but a lot of us need to read those things and, and work on our emotional goals. But there's also spiritual goals. And I'm going to challenge you with three of those today. Um, and, and here they are. Three things as a church I'm going to challenge you to do. Number one, I want you to intentionally connect with God this year. Intentionally, not just on accident, not just, you know, but make a time, make a place Spend time in prayer and spend time in your Bible. And let me give you a very quick, and I've done this a million times. I'm going to do this a million and one. You can do this ACTS prayer, A-C-T-S, anywhere you are, anytime. A stands for adoration. It means just acknowledging who God is. Sometimes that just means sitting still in his presence. Adoration. And then C is for confession. We know what confession is. Just making things right with God. Asking him to convict you, to show you uh, uh, the times uh, you know, that you have pride. We judge other people. We're selfish. I mean, there's all kinds of things. When you do conviction, that's how God changes us. Okay? And then T is for thanksgiving. If you want to change your attitude towards anything or anyone, work on your thanksgiving. It will change you, especially if you struggle with somebody. Work on being thankful. It'll change your attitude. And then finally, S stands. It's a big word. means supplication. It means praying for yourself and praying for others. And as I was praying for people this morning, I, I, do, I pray different ways. I have a journal, but I also sometimes just like to walk through church and see where people are sitting. I know that's weird, but as an ADD person, I'm very visual. And so I, I just see people and see people I talk to. So I prayed for many of you this morning by where you sit and prayed for you that God would bless you and, uh, uh, you know, ask him to give specific prayers. And I end my prayer praying for other people. So that's your first challenge. Your first challenge, initially connect and intentionally connect with God. Second challenge this year, intentionally connect with others. And there's several ways you can do that. One is to be in a small group. 
Uh, another way is to connect with people through serving. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Another way is just, you know, come to a church lunch. We're going to have church lunches at some point this year. I'm sure we'll be able to do that again. And let me give you number three. We want to intentionally serve others. So intentionally connect with God, intentionally connect with others, and then intentionally serve others. Now, let me give you what I feel like is the verse for the church this year. And I know this is a lot of introduction, but it's a series beginning. Mark 10, 21, the first part of that verse says this, Jesus looked at him and loved him. And I want us as a church for people to feel seen and loved in 2021. To really feel seen. When you're going down the hallway for you to stop and pay attention. When you're on Facebook to pay attention to not just a blurb, that, but what somebody's really saying. Maybe send that private message. Maybe go out of your way to send a text to somebody. Hey, I've missed you. You doing okay? And to go out of our way to make people feel seen. Everybody wants to be missed. Everybody wants to be loved. Even the grumpy ones want to be loved, right? And, and so we go out of our way to look for those opportunities to connect with others. And again this year, you know, we're looking for those opportunities to serve other people. Now, I am, do not consider myself a handyman, but I can do some handy things. And this book came in the mail. I was so excited. This is Most Requested Projects for Handyman. Now, I will tell you, as I look through this book, it's awesome. You read through it, and you look at all these things they do, and then I say these words. I will never do that. But that's great to see somebody did it. And so you read through it and you go, wow, I would never do that. But wow, look at that. They really know how to, wow, that's a good idea. I never thought of doing that. And now I will tell you one thing I found in here is a way to adjust uh, hinged doors, which I already did apply that to my life. But here's what's amazing. When you get this book out, it begins to spark interest and ideas, not just in what you see, but in other things. And you begin to look around at the world in a different way. Now, here's the deal. Even though I don't consider myself a handyman, let me tell you something. When you spend time in God's Word, there may be stories that you read that I hope you never have to experience. Rodney, I hope you're never put between two columns, blind, right? right? So you read these stories and you, you know, hey, I'm never going to be put in a lion's den, hopefully. Hopefully. Right? I'm never going to experience what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego felt when they were thinking, our God will rescue us. Ah, I guess not. Oh, wait, we're okay. Right? But when you read those things, what happens? God uses those stories, these true stories of faith, the things that God has done through history to remind us and to spark through his Holy Spirit that change in our hearts and our lives. Because listen, I do not want you to be the same next year at this time that you are this year. And that's going to happen when you spend time in prayer and you spend time in the Bible. You allow God to work on you. So no matter how old you are or how young you are, you allow him to change you, to convict you, to show you wrong, to show you right, to do what's right. In a world that's full of darkness, you become light when you spend time in his word. So let his word inspire you this year. And that's why we're going to start and go to God's word. Here we go. Questions to discover your goals. Here we go. Number one, what is the problem? If you're going to set a goal for this year, you got to define what the problem is. Okay. Sometimes you discover the problem very quickly when you step on the scale. Sometimes you discover the problem when you go to walk up a flight of stairs and you realize, I used to do that easily. Maybe you discover a problem when you aren't getting enough sleep and you realize, man, I'm just tired all the time. And so you have to first discover the problem. Nehemiah did that. I would encourage you, a great start to this year is read the book of Nehemiah. It will inspire you from a guy who took on a huge task. Only 13 chapters, pretty easy read. And here's what it says. Then I said to them, Nehemiah 2.17, you see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. Come. Come. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. So what is a God-sized problem in your life? Now, I know a lot of times we look inward, but I want to also encourage you to look outward. What's something that you can do to build a relationship with someone? Maybe you have a broken relationship with a family member. Begin to pray and say, God, one of my goals for this year is to work on that relationship. 
Maybe for you, you haven't had good boundaries. You know that you give in all the time in a certain situation. So maybe it's time to say, God, would you help me? It is God's size because I just want to do whatever people want me to do. So God, you show me how to have boundaries. And you begin to take those steps to do this. In Hebrews 10, 23 to 25, it says this. Let us hold unswervingly. I love that because I like to drive and I don't like swervers. Somebody behind me last night was swerving. They were acting like they wanted to go around me but didn't quite want to go around me. So they were just getting closer and closer to me and pretending they were going to go around me. So I'm working on my grace and love. So I actually pulled over and let them pass me. That's huge, by the way. Growing up in Miami, if you did that, you were going to get shot. So we learned. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Why? For he who promised is faithful. That doesn't mean you're always faithful, but he is faithful. And then it says, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And I love that word spur because it's the idea of what a spur is. In the Wild West, remember they had spurs? Why'd they have spurs? So if the horse needed to go a little quicker, now I hope if you have a horse now, you're not spurring them anymore. But what does it do? And that's what we're supposed to do to one another. We're supposed to spur one another on to love and good deeds. And then it says, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. By the way, it's easier to get in a bad habit than a good habit always. It is very easy to quit going to church. I will tell you, it is very easy to quit doing push-ups. It's very easy to quit making your bed. I mean, everything that's a good habit, it's easy to quit. It's hard to start, right? So let's not get in the habit of not get meeting together. And then it says... But encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. What does it mean to encourage somebody? To give them courage. Have you ever been discouraged? You ever just want to quit? You ever, you ever just get tired of life? One of our goals is to go out of our way. In Hebrews it says to go out of our way to encourage. What does that mean? Give somebody else God's courage. Help them to go forward. Give them hope for tomorrow. How do you do that? Sometimes just a simple text. You know, when you go home and you're praying, you say, God, will you show me somebody that I need to text or check on or call? You may actually call them on the phone. That would be something new and exciting, right? I want to encourage you this year. Make one of your goals to invest in other people. Go out of your way to, to share those things. The ultimate problem for all of us, though, is in Romans 3.23, which isn't on the notes. It says, for all have sinned and fallen short. And the old term was God's, now it says God's glorious ideal. It used to say the glory of God. It's the same thing. All of us fall short. And so the truth is in our sinful selves, we fall short what? We think about us. We think about our things. We think about who we are. And that's why the Bible says, go out of your way what? To encourage other people. Why? Because it gets you thinking outside of you. We tend to be selfish and self-centered. We like what we like. We don't like what we don't like. Number two. Are you trusting God or circumstances? Nehemiah continues, I told them about the gracious hand of my God upon me and what the king had said to me. They replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. Now, if you read in this story, Nehemiah had already begun to be threatened because of what he was starting to do. But when he shows up to encourage other people, what does he do? He talks about what God has done and not about the fear that's facing him. He focuses on the faith. Now, it doesn't mean he didn't deal with it. They asked him to come down at one point and meet with him. He says, I can't come down. I'm carrying on a good work. Can I tell you, sometimes you have to do that. You have to carry on a good work and not let circumstances keep you from doing what God's called you to do. Your long-term goals in life will help you to overcome short-term comeback, comebacks, setbacks. We all have setbacks. If you're going to train for a marathon, can I tell you something that's going to happen? If, if you even try to start exercising, can I tell you that you'll say, today I'm going to go a quarter of a mile. And you will get to an eighth of a mile and there'll be a stop sign there. And your brain will go, that's a good place to stop. You, you'll, you'll see a sidewalk, a crack on a sidewalk. That's a good place to quit running. I mean, your brain will constantly push you to stop, to quit, to go no further, to be selfish and self-centered. Are you going to trust circumstances or are you going to trust God? In Matthew 7, Jesus talks about it this way. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice 
It's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall. Why? Because it had its foundation on the rock. Where is your foundation? In hard times, we discover where our foundation is. There are people that this year have given up on Jesus, on Christ, on God. Why? Because they didn't get what they want. Because their foundation was, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And not on, Jesus, my foundation is in you. I trust you. Romans 6.23 puts it this way. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In our own way, we can work as hard as we want and we'll never earn heaven. But when we surrender to him, he gives us eternity. It's an amazing gift. Romans 5.8 says it this way. But God showed his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I like what Norman Vincent Peale says here. All successful people have a goal. No one can get anywhere unless he knows where he wants to go and where he wants to be or do. Where are you at now? Are you like Charlie Brown in the dartboard? You know the Charlie Brown dartboard? The Charlie Brown dartboard is you throw a dart and then you draw a dartboard. There's a guy on YouTube, he actually invented a dartboard where you can throw it and get a bullseye every time. That same dartboard, he made it when he plays against somebody that they can't even hit the board. The board moves. They'll throw the dartboard and the dartboard moves out of the way. It's awesome. That's how many of us live life. We say, well, the things I'm doing are right and the things they're doing are wrong. That's why we have to go back to God's word and put our foundation in Christ. So we discover the problem. Are you trusting God? Number three, how can I overcome challenges? You're going to have challenges. When Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tovite, the Ammonite officials, and Geshem, the Arab, heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed us. What's this you're doing, they asked. Are you rebelling against the king? I answered them by saying, see, somebody was questioning their motives. I answered them by saying, the God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. Eliashib, the high priest, and his fellow priests went to work and rebuilt the sheep gate. They dedicated it and set its doors in place, building as far as the Tower of the Hundred, which they dedicated as far as the Tower of Hananel. Now listen, no matter what your goal is this year, whether it's to lose weight, whether it's to start spending time in your Bible every day, whether it's to start to pray, whether it's to have a better relationship with your spouse or a family member, whether it's to be a better neighbor, whether it's to serve other people, I can guarantee you there will be people who question your motives. There will be obstacles to overcome. But ask God to give you a vision anyway. Begin to say, God, would you show me what you want me to do? I want to encourage you before you leave here today to write down Maybe in your phone, maybe even text yourself one goal for this year. Just one goal. This is one thing I want to see God do this year. About four years ago, I even put it on our website. I was praying at the beginning of the year and I really felt like God was going to help us to get a building. Now, I figured that meant we were going to raise money or somebody was going to make a big donation. Do you remember this, Suzanne? And I went and told the, the, our leaders and I said, you know, I just really feel like we need to move towards uh, getting a building. We were meeting in the community center. And honestly, part of the way through that year, I thought this is never, there is no way we've, we've raised $200 in six months. I mean, it was bad, you know, and I'm like, well, maybe that's not what we're supposed to, maybe I just heard God wrong, but I kept it on the website. And it was on the website. Do you remember that, Randy? It was on the website. Randy's like, why is this here? And um, it talked about having a place where we could come together and we could have 24 hours and we'd be able to set up and we'd be able to do things for the community, which we've been able to do. And a few months later, somebody called and said, would you be interested in this building? And for those of you who don't know, God gave us this place. It's miraculous. And he gave it to us free and clear in an amazing way with people who went out of their way to say, we just want to do what God wants us to do. The Brevard Baptist came to us and said, this church has given their building and we want to give it to you. And it was an amazing time. And God continues to do amazing things. But don't feel like just because God does something good that you're not going to have opposition. People who question your motives. People who come after you. It happened to Nehemiah. It happens to us. But don't give up on what God has for you. In the middle of that, let me encourage you with this last verse. 
1 John 5, 3 and 4. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Your faith can't be in you. Your faith can't be in what you've done. Your faith can't be in how good you are. Your faith can't be in if I do enough works, if I do nice things, if I give enough money, if I do this, then God will love me. No, no, no. It has to be surrender. God, I know you love me. I surrender to you and thank you for loving me. Now, I'll be honest. Sometimes as a Christian, there's days that you feel like God is far away. But by faith, that's when you say, God, I know by faith that you're not far away. And I'm going to overcome what I'm dealing with now by trusting you. Even when I don't feel like it. Even when it doesn't look like it's going to work out, I just trust you to know what's next. And God will walk you through. If you're here today or walk, watching online, I want to encourage you. Uh, here's the three goals that we had. Connect with God through prayer, Bible study. Connect with others. Find a small group. Get with a group of people. Start to get with a couple of people. You can even do it online. Talk about the Bible. And then intentionally serve others. Those are the three things I want to encourage you as a church to do this year as we help others to feel seen and feel loved. If you're here watching online too and you want to give your life to Christ today, I'd love to talk to you about what it means to give your life to Christ. Maybe like that little boy who came to me last night and wants to get baptized. Maybe you want to take that next step of faith and get baptized. And I'd love to talk to you about that too. So you can call me or text me or email me. Um, all kind of ways. You can talk to me after the service. We also normally do our time of giving here. Um, if you're watching online, there's ways you can give online. But you can give in the back on the way here too. Thanks for coming today. It's a happy new year. I'm glad to have you. My prayer for this year is next year at this time, you'll look back and say, I'm so glad I started that new habit of spending time with God in prayer and Bible study. I'm glad I stepped up and did what God called me to do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for these moments. I thank you for each one here. I pray that you would bless them. Bless each home represented here, not only with peace, but also with goals for this year. Goals for their family, goals for their home, goals for their lives, goals for their workplace. Father, and all of those things would come from you. So inspire us as we read your word. Change us as we read your word. We trust you, Lord. Father, I pray if there's anyone here that's watching online that doesn't know you, that today would be the day that they surrender their lives to you to allow you through your Holy Spirit to change them. Change us today now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.